Hello and welcome to my next video. With this video I would like to demonstrate the management of resource permissions on a DSpace repository. Uh, since uh, DSpace version 1.7 uh, there have been um, fine, fine control permissions features enabled to enable you to manage access control to communities, collections and items. In addition, I would like to um, demonstrate how to embargo an item during submission and also how to embargo an item after submission. And then um, I'd like to demonstrate how request to copy works. Okay, um, the previous videos, I've done previous videos on how to enable the embargo system. So please refer to that video to how to enable the embargo system. This video is um, how to use the embargo system. Um, I just want to make a note that um, we do not have any embargo policy as a university a library archive and we do not have any resource policies um, directives. So um, I suggest please watch this video and inform yourself as much as you can about resource policies and embargoes and then sit down and write some documentation about how would you like to uh, manage this. Uh, so if you would like to follow along, please go to this website wiki.lib.sun.ac.za uh, Just click on this link here, RR Guide uh, And then you go down to Customization And you click on Customization um, And then click on Operational Guide because this is an operational uh, issue and then click on access control click on access control again and this brings you to this page here so as the introduction mentions the resource permissions feature and the submit with embargo feature in the latest versions of DSpace allow you to manage and delegate access control to resources in your repository this is not what we want to do in an open access repository, however certain ethical, social, financial and legal realities may prevent this. Okay, so um, details about how resource uh, permissions are enabled or set up uh, is on this page here. Please note that you cannot manage uh, resource policies as a normal administrator, you have to be logged in as the super administrator and I'll demonstrate that now. Um, the super administrator, if you click on that link, is the person here where you created the administrator account with the DSpace installation. That, uh, that's the super administrator I refer to. Okay, so this is um, the type of permissions that you can uh, manage per community, per collection and per item. And then there's reference documentation at the bottom. If we go back to access control and we go to the submit the bugger, Okay, there's all the details of how to enable the embarker. There's no information here how to manage them. This is just to enable them. Uh, just to note that um, there is a simple and advanced method for the embarkers. Uh, we're going to, um, I'm going to demonstrate the usage of the simple method. Uh, if you click on that link, the DSpace will give you all the details of how to enable it on uh, the embarkers on DSpace. Okay. All right, we go back to access control. All right, so with that information, I just want to go back to our training server or development server here on the campus. And I'm going to log in as the super administrator because I now want to demonstrate how to manage access control to the community and to a collection. So the first step here is we go to login. There, we click on our login link. And we select the email login. And I'm going to log in as this scholar at Sun and with that password. Now this is the super administrator login account. As you can see there, I'm logged in as the scholar admin. Okay. It's the super administrator. Alright, so let's select for example the faculty of education and we want to now restrict access to this faculty. We click on here under the context menu. On the right hand side we click on edit community 
And then we scroll, uh, then we click on Assign Roles, on the Assign Roles tab here. And then you should see this appear there, this little link here, Edit Authorization Policies. And then you click on that. And now you see that there is basically uh, only one policy, which is an anonymous read. If you would like to add another policy, you click here. But let's have a look at this one. We just to modify this one, we just click underneath on the un underneath the ID. We click on the number, and then we see we have this edit policy a window open. Um, and here you now can uh, restrict access to a certain group. Uh, or leave the access to anonymous or change the access from read to write to add to remove to admin only okay we cancel that um, now for example we want to add another policy we just click here and again we select what kind of policy what group may have that now this is a policy it is not an embargo remember this is a policy this is something that has no date uh, parameters Okay. All right. That concludes the community one. Uh, let's go and select uh, a department from somewhere. Let's say uh, engineering department A in engineering. Now we click here again under the context menu right, to manage access control. There we click on edit collection and we click on the assign roles tab again. And there at the bottom. This link will appear if you are logged in as the super administrator. And there you click on authorization policies. And we can see some of these are a little bit different with the collections. Uh, you have a default bitstream read, a default item read, and then a read as well. If you want to change one of them, you just click on the policy number and you select what you want to do for in the details. So we cancel that. Um, and then again, click here to add a new policy, and I'm just going to cancel that. So there we are, that is the um, access control uh, for that particular collection. So the next thing I'd like to demonstrate uh, is then um, submitting an item with, um, with an embargo. So I don't want to submit it as the super administrator, uh, so I'm going to log out as the super administrator because this is uh, uh, going back to a normal operation. So I'm going to log in as a normal administrator, and I have already been uh, put into the administrator group, so I'm going to sign in here as a normal administrator. See there, now I'm uh, signed in as Milton Gibson. I'm no longer the scholar admin. And so, for example, if I click on the Faculty of Military Sciences and I click on Edit Community and then I click on the Sign Roles, ah, oh, there is the Edit Authorization Policy, so there we go, fine. Okay. All right. So you must just check your um, uh, system whether you can edit authorization policies. If you can't, please log in as a super administrator. So anyway, the normal procedure is to log in as an administrator and then to submit something um, to a particular collection. So let's go to the faculty somewhere where there isn't something already submitted and then we go to this one here, faculty over here, and then we click here to submit a new item. Alright, so the item I have uh, downloaded and prepared and let's just open it here quickly and I'll demonstrate what it is this item here will your research assets survive the ravages of time etc 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 okay so the author is Ina Smith so we go back to our submission form and we say the author is Smith and it's Ina and we add that there is no supervisor, the title, okay, let's go back to the PDF and see if we can scrape out the title, we'll copy and paste it. Uh, let's go here, select it, copy here, and we copy, and we go back to the submission form, and then right click here, and paste. That looks good. Next thing, we want to add the abstract, 
So we made the PDF here again, and copy and paste. And here, right click and copy. And we go back to the submission form and then we paste. Nice little issue with the submission form is you can change the box there. Make sure your uh, abstract has been captured nicely. So I'm putting these, uh, remove these funny um, carriage returns from. ASCII type um, formatting. Oops. Okay, so there's a nice clean abstract captured. Uh, date of issue, we go back to the PDF and uh, look for a date of issue. I can't see one, but in the title there at the top there it says 2010. So let's go back to the form here and say 2010. And 2010, we don't know what month, so by default it says January the 1st. And this is an article, it's presented in English South Africa. Some subject keywords, we go back to the PDF. Ah, and we've got some keywords here, so we can copy them. Control C, go back to the submission form, submit the keyword, press add. Ah, and then go back and capture another keyword. Uh, long term preservation, that's a good one. And go back to the form, submit it, paste. Try to put in as many meaningful keywords as you can, especially if you've enabled the uh, related items feature. The more keywords, the more related items will be found. So the next step now is to upload the file. And now you can see the uh, we've enabled the upload uh, with submission, but the simple form. And this is the simple form. The simple form only gives you a, a start date when access is allowed. So the item will be embargoed until that date. All right, so now to we need to upload a file, so we select that file, and we, there it is. Um, give it the file, this is the published version, give it a description. And then embargo until a certain date, uh, embargo until the end of August. Um, Funder requested. I can't think of any other reason for an embargo. Alright, uh, we've done that. Uh, we checked on the date. The date's correct. And then we click next. And then we have a review of the author, the title, the abstract looks good, date of issue looks good, etc. Um, unfortunately, something's missing here. Um, we cannot review the embargo date. And hopefully, this is something that's sorted out with the later versions of DSpace. So, that if you enable the submission with review, the review of the submission allows you to review the embargo date. But we assume the embargo date is correct. So, we carry on with the next. And then we must uh, uh, grant the license for the open access license and then. And we complete the submission. Now, depending on the workflow of the submission, we won't probably see the submission come through straight away. Um, we may have to wait a while. I um, can't remember where did we uh, submit that in the Faculty of Engineering, I think. Yeah. Um, let's go and have a look at my submissions to see where I submitted it. Oh, under the Faculty of Education. So let's have a look. And uh, if it isn't okay, there it is. Um, if we go to the Faculty of Education, to this, um, and then we edit the collection, uh, we'll probably see that there is no workflow. Okay, so there's no workflow. So it's, it's submitted and accepted immediately. So if we go back there. Um, we'll just go back to and see what my submissions are again. Okay, so here it is, submitted. Um, 
and uh, everything looks good there, so the track is abstract, everything's looking good. Um, if we view the metadata, everything looks good, author's good. Um, so fine. But how do we know it is actually embargoed? So let's log out and make sure that, uh, so it was under Faculty of Education, so it's this item here. If we click here, it should show that it's embargoed. There we go. There's the lock icon there, the little lock icon. And then if I click on there, the requested copy of the document appears. And I just fill in my name, my email address, and send the message. Now, the way we, we have done our requested copy, our policy is that the only that um, all requested copies go to our uh, administrator help account, which is scholar at sun.ac.z. Okay, so um, I think I've demonstrated uh, what's required. Um, we've done community permissions, we've done collection permissions, um, we've submitted an item um, and given it an embargo date, uh, embargo until date, and then we uh, logged out and then we tried to view the embargoed item and we were then presented with a request to copy form. And that uh, concludes my very brief introduction to uh, managing um, access uh, to resources uh, on a DSpace 5.5 repository. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, goodbye.